Hello! Today we'll be looking at how you can build the most powerful small fighter. If you follow this guide, you'll be turning the Starborn into Star Dust as soon as you see them, and taking down battleships without any trouble. We'll start by making the best possible Class A ship that you can make without any levels in the Starship Design skill. Then we'll look at the upgrades you can benefit from if you spend points on the skill and gain more levels. But you can take another step forward by using Class B components and we'll take a look at how you can take advantage of that to make your ship the most powerful in the game. We'll start with the Razor Leaf. That's the ship you get as part of the Mantis quest and it makes a great starting point. You can use any ship as your starting base but the Razor Leaf comes with some components that are very helpful early on. Go to the Stroud Eklund shipyard in the Narion system. They generally have the best components and we'll be using quite a lot of them. The first step is to replace the cockpit. Stroud Eklund cockpits have the same width as other Class A cockpits but have two more crew spaces. They're also a bit roomier when you reside the ship. There's really no reason to use any other manufacturer. Copy the colour settings from the default Mantis pieces if you want. Next replace the landing gears with AccuLanders. They have doubled the landing thrust of the default Mantis landers. You can't see the exact figures but as your ship gets heavier you need better landing gear. It's best to set the colour on one and copy it. With four of these landers, you should be able to go up to 1500 tonnes without needing more landers. Move the reactor and the shield, or delete them if you have the money to replace them with something better. The armour is to the back of the ship by default. Move it forward two slots so it's just above the cockpit. Then put the reactor just behind the armoury and drop the grab drive so it's just behind the reactor. The reason you want to do this is because the layout of the ship matters during combat. Components that get hit take damage and your reactor is the most important part of the ship. By putting it in the middle, it's as protected as possible. The grab drive is exposed to attacks from the rear, but it's less important than the reactor and will lay the ship out so it's only exposed from one direction. Delete the weapon mounts and electron beams. We'll be replacing them with better ones anyway. Take out the small engines and move the wings down one slot. You want to keep the Panoptus engines because you need level 3 in Starship design to get more. Attach the small engines to the grab drive or you can replace them with better ones. At this point I tend to put the White Dwarf 2000 series engines. They're more powerful than the small engines but fit nicely here. You'll need the extra power as the ship gets heavier. Push the cowl in two slots forward and add any 2x1 habitation. I tend to add a passenger hab because the ship doesn't have any passenger slots by default. You can put any 1x1 module above the grab drive. That will keep the drive protected from attacks from above. Put the shield and the fuel tank wherever you want. It's not a bad idea to put the fuel tank on the side of the reactor. That way the reactor is protected from direct hits. The ship basically has the same length and width as when we started. It's a bit taller in some parts but the key components are now protected better and the design has more room for expansion. The total cost should be around 26,000 credits. Accept it and travel back to New Atlantis. Here you want to buy Nova Cowlings. They're easily the best when it comes to giving you weapon mounts. Put two Nova Cowling 1L TF in the center. One above the cockpit and another one replacing the Deimos Cowling. They have three weapon slots each. Attach the Nova Cowling 2L PF either side of the cockpit. They have four mounts, two above and two below. But the important thing is that these are offset so the weapons don't interfere with each other. We still have pretty much the same profile but now we have more than enough weapon slots. Our ship is now fully prepped to become a weapon of mass destruction. You should regularly upgrade your reactor to whatever one gives you the most power. At this point you should have two that give you 20 power but the Amon Dunn 360T has a superior repair rate. The same goes for shields, always have the best possible set of shields because they keep you alive. You want to have the highest possible shield max health but you also want to minimize how much power they need. So if you have two systems that give you a similar shield health you want the one with the least max power. Another factor to keep in mind is the regen rate. That's how fast your shield regenerates after you take some hits. The higher the better. At this stage the Sextant SG-30 is the best. You have to put it on a side slot, so right next to the reactor is a good candidate. It keeps the reactor protected. 
If you follow my advice from before, the fuel tank should protect the other side of the reactor. If you haven't already, join the Vanguard and do the first mission that takes you to Tau City. Once you report back, you'll have access to Vanguard ship components. The most important one is the Vanguard Obliterator. It's a particle cannon that definitely obliterates enemy ships. Particle cannons are some of the best weapons in the game and you should definitely lean towards using them. They do equal damage to shields and armor, which is pretty nice because you don't need to worry about what weapon to use, just fire away until the enemy is dead. Lasers and ballistics can actually do more damage if you're willing to manage power during combat, but the big advantage of particle cannons is the superior range. Lasers have a range of around 1000 and ballistics have a range of around 800. Particle cannons typically have a range of 3000 though. As long as you have enough speed, you can destroy enemies pretty easily by simply staying out of their range while hitting them with your particle cannons. Missiles actually have more range and do more damage, but you need to get a lock and they fire slower. Overall, particle cannons are the best type of weapons in the game. But another factor to keep in mind is that all weapons of the same type go into the same slot and you cap the 12 power. So if you have a weapon that uses 3 power, you can only have a maximum of 4 of that weapon. This is what makes the Vanguard Obliterator superior. Most particle cannons need at least 3 power, but the Obliterator only needs 2. That means you can fit up to 6 on a ship. You can find cannons that do more damage per shot, but the Obliterator also has a faster fire rate than most particle cannons. Basically, the Vanguard Obliterator gives you the best bang for buck for a small ship. Put 6 on your ship, 2 on the central cowlings and 4 on top of the side cowlings. A small glitch on the side cowlings is that you can put EM weapons on the bottom. They clip into the ground but the game still permits you to do it. You can put up to 4 on the bottom slots. That will allow you to disable enemy ships and capture them if you want. For extra firepower, you can also slot a couple of missile launchers on the central cowlings. They give you that extra bit of range over particle cannons. It's good to have a couple for situations where range is really important. Atlatl 270A launchers are the most powerful you can have on a class A ship. You can fit up to 4. To finish things off, you can add two cargo containers right in front of the upper engines. Aside from the extra capacity, the way we place them keeps the engines protected from the front and also keeps the shield and fuel tanks protected from above. The critical components of our ship can only be hit from very specific directions. So how does it play in combat? The first thing to keep in mind is that you don't have enough power to power every system. Keep EM and missile systems at one power reach and max engine and shield power. Keeping at least one power on the weapon systems means they'll recharge slowly after you fire them, but you start with as much ammunition as if the system was fully powered. So we can still fire several volleys of missiles for free. That leaves you with several energy levels on the particle cannons. They're not fully powered, so they'll recharge slower, but you should be able to destroy most enemies in a few shots. We're level 25, but let's take the ship to a high level area and see how well it does. First is the key. There's a lot of firepower here. It's all about using our range advantage to take out one enemy at a time. You can see just how quickly enemy health goes down. Typically you need just one pass to destroy a small ship. Taking on groups of enemies is all about avoiding damage. In this case we pull the enemy away from their particle cannon platforms before we turn back to face them. Second are a couple of elliptic ships. They're definitely high level and have turrets. The particle cannons shred their shields pretty easily but trying to disable the systems exposes us to their firepower. You should only try to disable ships when there's only one left. A couple of bounty hunters are easy pickings for us. And the powerful space a ship tries to run from the mantis. We'll start facing away from it, so it gets a lot of hits on us. But you can see how the particle cannons make short work of it. You can also see how we can fire a few volleys of missiles, even though we're barely powering the system. It's a nice little way to complement the damage our cannons do and destroy enemies sooner. So as you can see, this ship is among the most powerful in the game. You can easily take on starborn fighters without too much trouble, especially if you stay out of range. We did take some damage because our shields are weak, but when it comes to layout and firepower, this is a ship that you can easily use until the end of the game. 
the most important part is that you can get it without upgrading any skills or spending too much money. But it does pay off to upgrade your starship design skill, because there's some powerful components that you can only get with higher levels of this skill. Better equipment also becomes available as you get to higher levels. So let's see how much more powerful we can get. The base shape remains the same, but at level 39 in Starship Design Level 4, you have access to much more powerful equipment. The biggest difference is that you get access to a new engine type. The Slayton Aerospace engines only need 2 power reach, so you can fit 6 for the best speed and maneuverability possible. They're also quite a bit more compact than other engines, so you can further streamline your ship. Basically, our engines can't get hit from the front now. You can get them at the Stroud Eklund Shipyard, and you'll need them because we're really going to pack on the weight. To power these new engines, you'll need more power, and the best reactor is the Spheromac DC-201. It's got the highest power generation and repair rate at this stage. It's a bit tricky to place, because it won't show up on the list if you try and directly place it at a connector. You'll have to place it outside the ship, and then move it to the reactor slot. You should also be upgrading your shield to the Marduk 1030A generator. You can get it at New Atlantis. The Sextant SG35 has a touch more shield capacity, but if you look at the details, you'll see that it takes 12 power, while the 1030 only takes 6 power. The 1030 is the obviously superior shield generator. The other change is that we've upgraded the cargo capacity to the Galleon S204 holds, and attached Carabelle V102 shield and cargo holds to the ends. That makes us very, very heavy. If you go over 1600 mass, you'll need more landing gears. So unless you want to make the ship bigger, this is as heavy as you want to get. If you find yourself just over, then one option is to decrease the fuel tank size or remove a couple of weapons. You can also upgrade your EM systems to the Nullifier 1750 for better disabling capabilities. And your missile batteries to the Adlatl 280A for a bigger punch than before. The ship plays very similarly to the previous version, but with better shields and better recharge on our particle cannons because of the upgraded reactor. You lose a tiny bit of maneuverability, but in practice you don't notice the difference. On the other hand, you get a hugely upgraded cargo capacity, so the trade-off is worth it. The last upgrade option is to level up your piloting skill and unlock Class B equipment. You can also get Class C gear, so you need more landing gears, which in turn makes your ship a lot bigger. Class B equipment is the highest you can use if you still want a nimble fighter. The biggest benefit is that with Piloting 3 and Starship Design 4, you get access to the Dockstar 104DS reactor. It gives you 39 power, which is only one less power than the best Class C reactor. This reactor is as good as it gets. You also get access to the final level of slate on aerospace engines. They're class A engines, but anything you might get in class B would make your ship too heavy, and you still get very high speed and maneuverability. The Realdyne 3000 Grav engine gives you a much improved jump range than you had before. And the Dogstar 28T shield generator massively boosts your shield to 1500. That's only a bit worse than the best class C shield, so your ship is both nimble and well protected. It does take 12 power though, so you need to be using a good reactor to get the most out of it. The Vanguard obliterators were replaced with a PBO-176 autohelium beam. It performs similarly to the obliterators, but it takes less ammo per volley. It offers a good balance between damage and rate of fire. The Firebolt 4000 suppressors give us a bit more disabling ability. And the CE-39 missile launcher is a definite upgrade on that front. Once you unlock Class B upgrades and you are high enough level, you'll find that you can get the best of both worlds. Our ship is still small and nimble, so we can still dodge enemy fire, but we now have the best possible protection, and our weapons still shred enemies. You can get a bit more shielding and a bit more firepower if you go for a Class C ship, but your ship becomes that much bigger. In my opinion, the difference is not good enough to give up the advantages of being quick and fast. So with the upgrades unlocked by the piloting and the starship design skills, what we have now is the best possible small ship, and arguably the best overall ship. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.